We're here today at USF Health where Dr. Dennis Kyle and his team are working hard to find a treatment for the dangerous amoeba that's lurking in our Florida waters. Take a look. Well, the problem is we have these free living amoebae that are out in the environment. They're pretty much everywhere in the water and the soil. And a very small fraction of those can cause human disease. And that's what we're working on. What's unfortunate is when these get in the right environment, maybe get up uh, your nose while you're swimming, playing around in water or using it to cleanse, then they can go through the nose up into the brain and actually cause a fatal infection. This happens actually just in a few days after you're exposed, you start getting symptoms that may be like bacterial meningitis, it's often misdiagnosed as that. A few days later, coma and followed by death. And almost always we find the amoeba just before or just after the person is either expiring or already in a coma and it's too late. Where do you find these amoeba? They're in the braining amoeba called Nagleria phalari is only freshwater. It does not survive in salt water. Where we find it most often is in water, anywhere in the water. So it's not only in the soil, so you can stir it up as you're, as you're swimming, but we've actually, this is one of my PhD projects, I found it actually in the water column as well. So it's also in soil. So you could theoretically get this in multiple ways, uh, exposed to this fresh water. The other amoeba that can cause disease are not this acute fatal disease like I just described for Nagleria phalari. They're known as acanthamoeba and balamuthia. Normally those are more of a chronic disease, but they can end up in being a fatal disease as well. The warm water places around the world is where we mostly see it, but if you look just at the United States, most of the diseases actually happen in Florida and Texas by far. There's only about 135 cases that have been documented in the U.S. since the early 1960s but 34 to 35 of those have happened in Florida. Another 34 or five have happened in Texas. So yes, we, we do have to be worried about this in Florida. What we really need for this disease is a new drug that works quickly. As I mentioned, the disease happens so quickly and it's often misdiagnosed early. So by the time it's diagnosed, the person's almost expired or about to expire. So the real need right now is a drug that will work quickly. Awareness of this amoeba is actually critical and you can see in some of the protocols in hospitals around here that they've actively changed the way that they look at these cases. They ac actually start asking now, has there been freshwater exposure in the last week? Because usually we see a history of this freshwater exposure within about four to five days before the onset of symptoms. So awareness of physicians and, and, and those in the hospitals to diagnose this is really important. We're hoping that the drugs that we're discovering for the acute disease caused by Nagleria would also be useful for these more chronic diseases that still have a very difficult outcome. How do you prevent your, uh, your child or yourself from getting this disease? It's really important. Uh, and there's an active campaign now called Amoeba Awareness that some of the families of these victims are promoting. And it's very simple. The, the, the theme is it's 99% fatal, but it's 100% preventable if you, if you know about it and either your child keeps the head out of the water or you use nose plugs. And just know that if you're in a warm water environment in Florida and fresh water, the chances are very high that that amoeba is going to be in the water. We don't like to talk about this as being a rare disease because really these amoeba are so prevalent that we're getting exposed to them all the time. And the, the problem is that if somebody gets it, the impact is usually very high because it's a fatal disease. So to work on this amoeba, we have to follow very strict biosafety protocols. We certainly have been fortunate that USF, we have special equipment, special ways of handling this and highly trained personnel because working on a pathogen like this we have to be very careful. But it's really important that we found to be able to, to
to discover a drug, we have to work with the real pathogen. We can't work with some of the, the non-pathogenic brothers and sisters of this. Uh, we think we would miss a lot of things that, that we would catch by using the real pathogen. A few years ago, put in an application for the National Institutes of Health and we got the, the first grant that I know of to actually work on this for amoeba. And we found compounds already in the first, the first two years of the project, we found candidate compounds that are already 500 times better than any of the approved drugs. And so now we're working in a new grant that just started to actually take those and actually try to turn those into drugs in the next few years. Thank you.